Hi guys. Hi guys. Welcome back to my channel Logic Ops Lab. So today we're going to talk about three things. SDLC, software development life cycle, feasibility studies and DevOps culture. But before moving on, if you are new to this channel, please take a moment to subscribe it. Thanks. So let's dive into the video. So as you can see on my screen, the first phase is dedicated to requirement gathering and analysis. So all vital information is gathered and analyzed in this step. This step is designed to resolve all ambiguities regarding future software development. Second phase is design. Design is where all the entire, all or you can say entire architecture of the future product is created. So whenever we talk about the architecture of any software that is going to be developed in the future, that will be created in design. Third is coding. Coding is something which is also known as implementation somewhere. So it is the third phase in software development lifecycle. All the components of the design software are implemented and the source code is created. It does not matter what language is used, it's just that the source code is written in this phase. Following, there is a testing phase. So this testing phase involves the checking of any faulty parts of the code and then it is fixed. Everything is thoroughly tested and if needed, retested until all the problems are solved. Moving on, the next phase is deployment. So after the software has been tested and all the necessary iterations are made, it enters the deployment phase. The product is then released to the end users after the deployment. And once the deployment is done, it moves to the maintenance phase. So maintenance accompanies software along its whole life cycle. If users find any issues, depending on how severe they are, the problem can be hot fixed or fixed with the next planned release. So that's what a software development life cycle looks from a 10,000 foot overview. We have an honorable mention for feasibility studies. So feasibility studies are generally of five types. First would be the economic one. Economic is something like, can we complete the project within the budget or not? So there is a budget allocated and can we complete that in or not? So that's the first thing. Second would be legal. Legal is something in which we ask, can we handle this project as cyber law and other regulatory framework compliances? Third would be operation feasibility. In operation feasibility, we ask, can we create operations which is expected by the client? Next is the technical feasibility. In this one, we need to check whether the current com computer system can support the software or not. Or do we need to make any change according to that? So that's what we talk about in technical. Third would be schedule. In schedule or schedule, you decide that the project can be completed within the giving schedule or within timelines or not. So that's where we answer this. So in today's software development lifecycle, feasibility studies are a few things that play a major role. Now let's talk about the DevOps culture. First of all, I'm not explaining here like what exactly is DevOps because that's not the scope of this project. We'll talk about the DevOps culture. DevOps culture is a cultural shift. It does not, it, it, it's not a matter of simply adopting agile planning or automated testing or continuous delivery, CI, CD, anything. Although those practices are certainly important, but DevOps culture is all about a shared understanding between the developers and the operation. You, now you're getting where it got, got its name. Dev, Ops, Developers, Development and Operations and then sharing responsibility for the software they build. That means increasing transparency, communication, and collaboration across development with IT operations and the business involved. Like any other big change, building a DevOps culture can be scary and we understand it. But we learn through our own experience and from the customers, the two ingredients are the key. First, the clarity around the expectation and the environment of psychological safety. Without them, team tends to thrash around making mistakes and worse, not even learn from them. But take heart, 
we have four plays that will make your team DevOps journey easier. First is roles and responsibilities. Second is rules of engagement. Third is pre-mortem. And fourth is retrospectives. When we talk about roles and responsibilities, we can say that now that development and operations are collaborating closely, it's time to clarify who does what, plus identify any skill gaps. So this is the point in your early DevOps journey as well as your time, your team's membership changes. So that's where you decide who is going to do what. And this would be the first thing in your DevOps journey because you don't want to fight the developers to do something and the operations guy to do something. So that's where we define the boundaries. Second is rules of engagement. Whether you are a United DevOps team or a cross team working group, you'll work better together if you only if you explicitly define how you'll work together. So you have to follow these rules of engagement in order to uh, avoid anything that may delay the project or might affect your deliveries. Third would be pre-mortem. So what's better than doing root cause analysis on an incident? There can be any number of incidents that happen in a software development life cycle. And there are a lot of steps in which anything can happen. So you have to anticipate these risks so you can solve them where there's still time. So you have to follow this pre-mortem methodology for that. And the last one would be retrospectives. This classic agile technique is critical for creating a culture of continuous improvement and learning. You learn from your mistakes and when you do a retrospective on that, you learn about what went wrong and what can be done in future to avoid that. Retrospectives provide a safe place to discuss what's working, what's not and what needs to be changed. So we need to follow this methodology in order to create a DevOps culture. So I think you got an idea of what we did today. So we took three things and we talked about them. And I hope you have got the point of what a DevOps culture is, what is software development life cycle and what is a feasibility study. So that would be all for today, guys. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next video.